Welcome to Is There Any Word from the Lord? Uh, my name is Shane Fisher, and I'm an evangelist for the Lord's Church. And, and I'm David Fanning. I'm also an evangelist of the Church of Christ and a promoter of thegospelofchrist.com. And we are here to give you more of the fourth lesson in our series on preparing the New Testament Christian, the new, as you are a new Christian in your area, in your community, trying to plant the, the Church of Christ and grow it in your area. We want to give some practical uh, pointers in helping you do that. So with my experience, and I'm not, I haven't had very much, and I've just helped to basically plant one congregation in Uganda, and it was through a Bible correspondence course called ibtmministries.org, and we're actually in need of more New Testament Christians who can become teachers because you can teach thousands well, or hundreds of students and help them to plant the Lord's Church in their area of the world. And David, what was your experience? Well, actually, I helped to Shane as he was able to convert one of the gentlemen there in Uganda. Then he deferred over to me so I could help him with the organizational part of establishing a congregation there. And we started it in the gentleman's home. Uh, great story there. Time would not permit for us to let, let a person know about that. But I also helped establish two congregations in the United States. Now, the biggest thing I definitely want to emphasize is it's not about what Shane did or what I've done, mm -hmm. but it's actually the fact that you can do this too. And as I want to say, especially I had a gentleman a couple of years ago come to me and see how things was going with me. And he used to be a strong, faithful member of the church. He went up north, couldn't find a church of Christ, so he started to attend a departure, a division. I said, well, what are you doing that? He said, well, I don't know what else to do. I said, start a church. He's like, I hadn't thought about that before. And that's, that's the first thing we want you to do is think about it and then do it. And I can assure you right now, uh, I had no idea that I'd start planting the Lord's Church in the United States, much less uh, overseas. But the fact is the power's in the gospel and you've got to trust. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Lean on the Lord, lean on the true gospel, and it will happen. It will work. With perseverance, it will work. So that's what we want to talk about is practical things when it has to do with starting the Church of Christ. Yeah. So what do you do? What do you do if you're a New Testament Christian? You're the only Christian in your community. What all are you to do? Well, we, want, we hope we can help you with this. And so first we're going to talk about the organization for the meeting, uh, trying to get other people interested. Right. And David, you've had more experience in this area, so... Yeah, in fact, about the that? very first congregation I helped establish was initially in Alabama, and then we moved over to Tennessee. But we started off by a ad that we put in the paper. So you got to start thinking about this. Okay, how can I get this information out? Kind of like an advertisement. How can I get this information out? I want to be able to get to the community this announcement that we are beginning a New Testament church, and anybody interested in learning or becoming a part of this church are invited to this particular meeting at this particular place at this particular time. And so you're going to get that organizational meeting together, however it works in your country or in your community as far as advertisements are concerned. There's a lot of neat ways in which you can do this. Television, radio, a lot of times, especially television, may be expensive, but at the same time, you can do things that doesn't cost anything. There's like what they call service announcements, and you can actually fax or email uh, your announcement to a radio or television. And a lot of times, they'll go ahead and, and they'll mention it, and there's no cost to you. Uh, also, you can put it in a paper if you need to in your community, or if there's other ways like Facebook. There's so many different ways in which you can get the advertisements out. So really brainstorm about how can I get this announcement out so the most amount of people can hear this, to know that we have an organizational meeting and we're going to start this church uh, in this place. In fact, I was going to uh, read where a particular announcement that I had put together where basically you're saying, you know, we are starting. Here it is right here. It says, we are starting a New Testament church in our community. Here's how you'd word it. If you are interested in learning more or helping us get this church started, you are invited to our organizational meeting, and then you put the place and date and time. If you have any questions or need directions, please contact me. Give your name and number. So, you know, we're going to keep it real simple and real practical, and so that's what you want to do. Another thing that, that I also encourage in the way of organization is organize yourself first before you get it started. Uh, the very first congregation, like I said, I helped to establish was I put together a five-year plan for mission work. I put it together and titled the town that I was going out to reach, the community, the need, the fact that the community needed a New Testament church in the area. The goal was to, of course, establish a faithful church. The means we're going to do that as far as the organizational meeting, and then we go from there. So I'd already planned everything out before we ever got it started. And if you think about it, when you go to Acts chapter 1, and you see how that God had planned, planned how he was going to start the congregation, the Lord's church, the Jerusalem church of Christ there in Acts chapter 2, is it was going to first start in Jerusalem, then Judea, then Samaria, and then the uttermost parts of the earth. So there was a plan there. There's a plan there. So number one, realize you can do it. Number two, then do it. 
and put together a plan on how you're going to do this. The first thing you want to do then is you want to do an organizational meeting, Shane, and decide where that's going to be, whether it be in your home, whether it be in some kind of community center. And especially when you're overseas, I mean, the, the, the cultures are so different. You just have to figure out you know, what's the best way that we can get this information out so that folks can come in and, mm -hmm. and hear what we have to say. And then from that, hopefully, there'll be some folks that'll be interested. Now, what happened with the first one I helped establish, we had almost 40 people, Shane, show up at that particular uh, organization. And uh, a lot of them had l left the church, had, had fallen away from the church. So we had a nucleus there of folks that would get restored and really get the jump started. And that, and that was really my first experience. And I had no idea we were going to have that kind of response, but the need was huge. And as we stated in our third lesson of this series, as we have, for instance, the University Church of Christ in Tuscalo Tuscaloosa, Alabama, which is a huge magnet for a lot of folks that go to the University of Alabama and that kind of thing, as they bring in the instrument in worship and so many, so many of these others, we're going to have to then begin to establish New Testament churches again, and we'll have these organizational meetings. There'll be a lot of folks that are, you know, that are in these congregations that don't know what to do, and so we will have this answer for them as we put this organizational meeting together. And that's what happened with this first one that I established uh, back in the '90s. Is that we had a lot of folks to show up, a ton of folks that were restored, and from that came a lot of baptisms, and we ended up within a three-year period building up to about 80 members. You know, just within a three-year period. Now, I don't want to paint it, you know, that, that rosy because uh, the other mission work that I just recently helped to establish, uh, we looked at the organizational meeting and there were some curious people that showed up. There wasn't really any true interest there. Mm -hmm. And so the next thing we encourage to do is that you just got to go door to door, person to person, start doing Bible studies and eventually find somebody who wants to obey the gospel. And just a couple of weeks ago that happened. And so that church started in that particular area. And now they're worshiping every first day of the week, you know. And that's how they're going to build it. So you start, as we talked about in this whole series, you convert somebody to Christ, and then you start the church, you meet every first day of the week, and you begin to do it that way. Yeah, and I think what occurred with Owino, uh, the man in Uganda, is what we did was when, we, when he became a Christian, uh, IBTM Ministries also had some physical uh, pamphlets of the Bible Correspondent Courses, so they were able to give them to some of his neighbors and friends and I think if I remember right around 20 or so became New Testament Christians so there's a you know a hub of Christians in that area and striving to build that congregation up right and of course obviously the gospelcross.com we're continuing to build our materials as well and we like to co cooperate with all sound brotherhood works uh, no doubt world video bible school is another good source of information just on the internet when you go to the various YouTubes and so forth that are out there available so the materials are there but especially the gospel cross material our materials are free including shipping and handling and that's true internationally as well so you know you can go on our site and you can get anything transcript form and you can p copy it out and use it in your work. You can, you know, take anything that we have that's on our site and you can copy it out and you can and disperse it or you can email it. And so, you know, that's one of the things that we're striving to as the gospel of Christ is make sure everything of what we have is free, including the shipping and handling, because we want to really, really excite evangelism throughout the world and, and, and also, of course, no doubt in the, Ute uh, in the United States as we see a decline here in the Lord's Church. Yeah, so David was talking about using that free media request form on the Gospel of Christ website so that you can order these CDs or DVDs to help you and you can hand these out to your friends or co-workers or neighbors and share the Gospel with them in that way. But you can also view it on the Internet itself and it's called the Free Media, Free Video, Audio, and Transcript. So you can go there and listen to Brother Ben Bailey, and he will, uh, and I would go to various subjects like salvation, teaching you how to be saved from your sins, uh, to go to baptism, and go to the, the Church of Christ. Uh, those are the various topics that I would go to. Um, all other resources is YouTube.com. There's actually a lot of good things on there. Uh, let me promote one thing called, uh, on YouTube.com, or going to searchingfortruth.com, this DVD. You can also get it in physical form. You can also watch it on the internet. Six great videos that share with someone about becoming a, just a New Testament Christian and the One True Church of Christ. And you can actually give a, a booklet to people. And this will actually, it, cover, it covers the video and it covers the questions and answers. And it's a very great tool you can give out to people to help them to become New Testament Christians. So, that's something I hope that you'll do. Or maybe you say, hey, why don't you take an online Bible correspondence course? And you can go to IBTM Ministries, 
dot org, or you can go to Truth for the World or TFTW dot org. Uh, and take their Bible correspondent courses. Of course, and, one thing we'd say for sure is just be careful. To make, you know, the sites that we're giving you are reliable sites, but there's a lot of false doctrine out there. You just got to be really careful when you're searching on the net. But there's a lot of good information out there. Right. Um, so we've talked about you know sharing the gospel with others. So you, hopefully, besides you, there will be others who become New Testament Christians. Now, um, whether it's you just as an individual or with a group of new group of Christians, you probably are wondering, well, what do we do now? <laughs> well, God, He, since He is sovereign and He and He is our King, uh, He does He commands us and desires us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And so we want to just give you some practical things on how to go about uh, ordering the worship, and and we'll go from there. So we know that. God, He desires us to worship Him on the first day of the week. In Acts 20, verse 7, it says, it talks about, now on the first day of the week, they came together to break bread. And we've talked about this referring to the Lord's Supper. And of course, uh, we'll get into more of that in just a moment, but we see that we're to come together to remember our Lord and what He did. And that's so very important because He is the purchaser of the church by His own blood. And we should be so grateful for the salvation that He's provided for us. And that's why we uh, demonstrate in singing to Him, singing praises, as we pray to our Heavenly Father, as we preach the gospel, as we'll talk about, and as we give of our means to help continue to perpetuate in having the gospel continue to be spread. And so 1 Corinthians 11 talks about the Apostle Paul saying, when you come together, when you come together, and when did they come together? Well, they came together on the Lord's Day, on the first day of the week. And so that's what I would do at first when we're starting the, the Lord's Church is having a set time and place. And maybe it will have to be at your home because you don't have the financial resources to, so that, that it would be the case that you would have the worship service on the first day of the week at your home. So yeah, that's a lot of times the way that that starts now. Again, the first work that I established in the 90s, we actually met in a boot building. That's only because the organizational meeting was so successful and so many people were interested that we actually had a means to get the the building secured mm -hmm. and to to rent it, a old boot store building. So it really has a lot of meaning, you know, that building does. But we were able to accomplish so much in that building. It was not at all designed for, quote unquote, a, a church assembly. And we actually built our own little baptistry in there. We actually got, you know, somebody knew how to do a little bit of boarding and all. And we just mm -hmm. got, you know, this waterproof thing that we put in there. and. Uh, and you know, and that's how we baptize people in Christ. A very, very personal, very meaningful situation. So you know, that that's how you want to get started. Like like Shane is saying, is you know, start thinking about the worship. You know, once you've converted that one person, now you got two gathered together. Now you can uh, worship God on the first day of the week together. And so you want to start off by making sure that you got a place to meet and that it's with that's affordable, like you said. And one of the things that we do want to talk about before we move on, uh, Shane, is to make sure that as you're planning. The, the gospel in your area, uh, you want to make sure that you you do it in a, what they call an indigenous way versus a paternal way. Now, I know that's some fancy terminology, but what that simply means is what you're going to hopefully do is you're going to find good, strong, faithful men who obey the gospel and are leaders to help out, and you want to spread the work out. You don't want to be the paternal. You don't want to be the daddy that just runs the whole thing. You don't actually want, if you're overseas, you don't want somebody overseas from the United States coming in and being the daddy the whole time and doing everything. That has been proven year after year, time after time, to, to not be effective. And that's not what God teaches anyway in Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. It's talking about each one does his or her share, share causes growth of the body. So we're all working together. And we want to always have that mentality starting off. So the indigenous part is where you have the natives. You have those who are in that culture who are the leaders who are part of that. So you might have a, an overseas missionary person who's not part of the culture, who's not a native that it, place to get something jump-started, uh, but then at the same time, at some point, you've got to just have your nationals, your folks that are there that eventually are the ones that are going to be taking that and, and moving forward with that. So let's keep that in mind as we think about these things. Mm -hmm. So let's get into a little bit more on practical concerns with how to go about doing the worship. Um, and one of the things we're going to talk about first is the Lord's Supper. Now, we got a series on how the Lord's Supper is to be taken. Uh, you can go to the TGOC website. The Gospel of Christ website, and there's a actually a four part. Well, there's a four part series that we've done on YouTube. Me and Ben Bailey have that you can watch. 
Or you can go to uh, an article that I did write and talk about the Lord's Supper and how it's to be done in that way. But anyways, so what are some ways we can make unleavened bread? Well, there's actually a, ingre- the, make the ingredients, you can actually go to the internet, and there's actually a website that provides uh, how to make unleavened bread at home. You can do that. You can buy at the grocery store. Uh, you can also uh, think about, well, what are we going to use to pass it out to people? Well, there's various ways. In the United States, we use a tray. But if you want to use something um, just to put the bread in, whatever is best I mean, that, that you can use, that's what basically that you can do. Um, and one of the things I guess we should probably mention is it doesn't really require a literal table, right, David? Right. Right. I mean, you don't have to get a table and put the embl- the emblems on there. Uh, you can put them out on the floor if you want to. I mean, it, it depends on what you have. I mean, it's just a case that um, not very many people have very, very much. So what we're trying to do as least as possible to help you just think about these matters. Yeah, that's think- one thing I've always emphasized. Is, you know, you don't want to overextend yourself financially because then that could really hurt the situation. So, you know, as far as the Lord's Supper is concerned, you use unleavened bread and fruit of the vine. You know, in the United States, no doubt, most people get the Welch's grape juice, you know, but uh, I know your situation, Uganda, you had to kind of give some other instructions that might be good for folks to know about that. Yeah, so let's talk about the fruit of the vine. Remember, it's grape juice we're talking about. It's not grapefruit juice. (laughs) I actually know a guy who bought grapefruit juice. That's not grape juice. It's not grape soda either. And it's not, especially not wine, alcoholic wine. So what, what, another procedure in getting grape juice besides maybe going to a grocery store near your area is you can actually get dried raisins. And of course, you know, dried raisins are dried grapes. And you can boil them in water and extract the, the juice from that. And that's how you're able to get the grape juice. So just to give you an idea there. Um, every Christian uh, can bring their own cup. And you can maybe just pour the, the, the fruit of the vine into each cup that way when you're serving it. Uh, you could buy your own plastic cups if you want to, but we're trying to do this for people who may not have the financial resources because plastic cups cost a lot of money. Um, so you could actually buy your own plastic cups and maybe give everyone their own plastic cup to wash out and bring back if they want to. Uh, it's up to you. There's, you know, just brainstorm and think about this. You could use one cup, but let me just tell you that for health reasons, that probably is not a good idea. But no, and and another thing you want, if you had the means to do it, you go on StarBible.com, and they have actually you know trays and cups and things you can you know even the Lord's Supper package and so forth. So there, there's ways to do that as well. But you know what Shane is basically pointing out is that you know don't don't get complicated. Keep it simple. Keep it affordable. Keep it within everybody's means. So that you know that never be a, is a hindrance for your worship to God. All right. So how do we go about conducting the Lord's Supper? Well, let me just give you some practical suggestions in doing this. Uh, of course, we, knew, we do know that the Bible requires a if there's a mixed group, it would be a male leader. So a male leader should do he could do this: lead a song before the Lord's Supper to be taken to help you know focus our minds on the Lord and what He did for us, and get a song that pertains to the Lord's death. Um, secondly, another possibility is maybe to read a passage of Scripture. Read the Garden of Gethsemane. Read the crucifixion passages. Read some of the prophecies of the prophets that talked about our Lord's death, like Isaiah 53 or Psalm 22. Uh, that would be a good idea in helping to devote our minds to what the Lord did for us. Uh, and just maybe a, the male leader could talk a little bit, give a little devotion, and tell us why we're partaking of the Lord's Supper. That helps us focus our minds on that matter. So that's something that you could th- be thinking about. Now, we need to follow the Lord's example and how He offered the Lord's Supper. And what our Lord did is that He prayed for the unleavened bread, then He passed it out for the disciples to partake of it. Then He prayed again for the fruit of the vine, then they passed out the fruit of the vine to the, the disciples to partake of it. So that's the, the example that we're to follow and just to give you practical suggestions on how to do this. Exactly. And one thing I was thinking too, as you begin to bring new converts in or, or people 
actually come into your area didn't realize that you were around and we're looking for the New Testament church and they're already faithful members of the church or, or they may not be. You gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta have some kind of process in order to do that. And I know different elderships through the years gave me the idea of actually putting together a questionnaire. And I know, of course, uh, our brethren who are now causing divisions in the Lord's church, they would have an absolute cow on this idea. But the fact is we have a questionnaire that questions them as to what congregation they were with before and were they faithful and uh, are they married? Is, if they've been married before, has their spouse been married before? You know, so you want to you get as much information as you can. And you're certainly not being nosy. You're just simply being prudent and making sure that you don't bring in cancer into the church. And, and it's just if somebody's not willing to to be volunteer to do that, then they don't have the proper attitude, and that's certainly somebody you, you know that you wouldn't want to be a part in the assembly. Because when you start doing the worship, I mean that is so important, but to be done biblically and correctly. And if you don't do it correctly, then once again, I mean you're going to cause a division versus the true New Testament church. You want to make sure you establish New Testament church and maintain it as the New Testament church. And the last thing you want to do is bring in leadership uh, that is going to corrupt the worship. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's move on to the singing, item of singing in our worship. Uh, of course, the Lord commands vocal worship, uh, vocal singing under the New Covenant, Ephesians 5.19, Colossians 3.16. So how do we go about, um, and you could read an article by Brother David actually on the Gospel of Christ website that talks about this matter. So just to let you know about the, the theology of singing and stuff, stuff like that. So... What are some practical concerns on how to, you know, uh, go about doing the singing? Well, you could learn to read the music. Uh, that's something that you could do. Learn to read the notes and see how a song goes. Uh, unfortunately, I just don't have that talent, David. So, but uh, do you have that talent? <laughs> well, I've been blessed to be able to do that. But the point is, is that most people uh, would not be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And that's okay because God is not looking for some great singer or somebody who's extremely good at singing or whatever. He's just looking for somebody who praises him in song. So right. in the first century church, they didn't have this four-part harmony. So a lot of times people are like, oh, I listen to the churches at the United States and they have this four-part harmony. So how are we going to do that? You, know, you don't have to worry about that. Again, we're trying to keep this practical and keep it reasonable and keep it duplicatable throughout the world. You know, you can actually uh, all sing on the same tone and that might be a better way to start anyway because that way you know everybody's staying with the song leader and it, it doesn't become you know confusing or chaotic so that mm -hmm. that would be something to consider now how do you think Shane people could get access to some of the songs since obviously that's a big cost if you ever try to buy the song books very costly so no doubt you could reach out to some of the Church of Christ to see if they you know have some uh, old books that they could use and, I, and we actually did that when I established uh, in fact, the, the two congregations in the United States helped establish those. We actually got songbooks from other congregations. But you, I think you had some websites people could go to, especially since it's worldwide. Yeah, there's a website that I actually visited called Kleinwood.com. And I think it's a congregation established in Texas. They have this annual singing. And evidently, they have a legal manner of putting out these songs for you to download. And so um, I would visit that website. How do you spell that? Uh, K L E I N W O O D dot com. Uh, so I just know, let you know about that. Uh, on YouTube, you gotta be very careful, but there are some uh, songs on there that are a cappella style singing that you can listen to. Um, there's also www.churchofchristsongs.com, and that's a website that has a PowerPoint has the mp3 files for you to download to listen to and for, to print off the, the songs that they have made um, so and the can, songwriter gave the permission to do that so there's yeah. no copyright issue there right and uh, they're like David had said there's several congregations that are trying to give away their old song books I actually know of a congregation so if you need old song books that are well in hand we'd be glad to give you those to help you start out um, what I use for one example, like last night with the young people, uh, I use what I call my iHome. It's uh, basically where you put your iPod on, on it and it plays uh, through, the loud, through the speakers. So what we did was we learned some new songs that way. So I, I downloaded these songs from you know the annual singing, put them on my iPod, play them, and the kids can listen to them. They know how the song goes. So you could do it that way if you desire. So you could have a, a, a set aside time where you have a group of Christians just listen to those songs so they know how they go, they can sing them together, and then you can incorporate that into the worship service. So, uh, or you can use your iPad, iPhone. I mean, there's 
various means of communication on how to listen to these songs and, you know, doing it through the speakers, right. so to speak. Exactly. So, that's some things I have. Anything right. else that you want Well, to I was going to say, you know, you have your worship to do worship, but when it comes to learning the songs, you know, either you want to go before the worship or after the worship or just sometime yeah. during the week yeah. where everybody's getting together and, and we're just learning songs together. Mm -hmm. And, again, that's all up to how you want to do that. But, again, just don't keep it, you know, keep it simple. Don't keep it, make it complicated and, and learn it. And it's exciting. Like I said, I've, I've helped to start a couple of congregations uh, in the United States and to see how this all develops. It's really exciting. So, you know, there, there are some challenges, no doubt, but at the same time, you know, just push forward and, and just keep it simple and then you, you can expand from there. Okay. So our next item is, called, is the item of worship called giving, where we give a portion of our means as the Lord has prospered us. You can find this in many New Testament scriptures. Um, but where do we put our giving? Where do we put the money? Well, you can put it in a shoebox. You can put it in a, uh, like they do in Korea, they'll put it in a, uh, put it in an envelope and they'll put it in a box even before the, the worship starts. Um, but we're trying to be practical here. Uh, you could put it in a tray that's passed along to everybody else to put money in. So there's various ways to, to give of our means. Um, but when it's, when the giving is done and when the worship service is over, there ought to be at least, I would say, and this is my opinion, but three Christians who are counting the money because we don't want there just to be one Christian because they could sadly be given into the temptation right. of covetousness yeah, and, you've and got stealing. Judas Iscariot is an example of that, and even Jesus chose him. So keep that in mind that you'll do, you can do everything possible to be able to, to vet you know, those before you put them in leadership position and, and you've done everything right and you can still have basically one go sour and, and just, you know, you just got to handle that correctly. But don't, don't get, let that discourage you. Don't let that discourage and you. And have a copy of where these expenses are going and where and what, what's being paid out, what's being paid in and give that a copy to all the members of the church so they'll know where the money is being spent because it's the Lord's money. And so I hope that Thus far, we have helped you and given you some brainstorm ideas on how to go about uh, doing the worship service, and we hope that we'll help you in every way possible, and be sure to visit www.thegospelofchrist.com to help you have the resources to help you in this area. Thank you.